Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be running through the Krebs cycle. So the Krebs cycle is the second part of aerobic respiration following on from glycolysis and it occurs in the matrix of the mitochondria. Now before the pyruvate which was made in glycolysis can enter the Krebs cycle, it has to be turned into a different molecule which is acetyl-CoA. This little pre-Krebs step has to happen first. So our two pyruvate molecules that were formed from the glucose get transformed into two molecules of acetyl-CoA. And this also gives rise to a little bit of CO2 and some NADH. So now that acetyl-CoA that was formed is ready to enter the Krebs cycle. Now the Krebs cycle is essentially a series of reactions that occurs in the matrix of the mitochondria where multiple intermediate molecules are formed. But you don't have to worry about exactly what these molecules are or the exact reactions that are occurring. What's really important is to understand the inputs and the outputs of the reaction and where it's occurring. So our inputs are our acetyl-CoA, and it would be okay to write pyruvate there instead, some ADP plus PI, some NAD, and some FAD. And then our output, so what we get out of the reactions, are two ATP in total. Okay, so that's from two cycles of the reactions. Also get some CO2, some NADH, and some FADH2. And just a reminder that this is occurring in the mitochondrial matrix. Okay. Another important thing to remember is that there's energy carrier molecules that, has been, that have been formed, so the NADH and the FADH2, then become important in the next stage of aerobic respiration, which is the electron transport chain. I know that sounds like a lot to remember, but if you can focus on the inputs, the outputs, including the ATP yield and where that reaction is occurring, then you're setting yourself up really well. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys.